This is a direct uh, detection in IHC, direct workflow. So, like I said before, antibodies conjugated directly to fluorescent dyes, and then we can pretty much mix them and have all three antibodies in one cocktail and incubate tissues or cells with these antibodies, and it's a very short protocol. We get uh, detection easily and uh, get results uh, pretty fast. What are the pros? It's a very short protocol. If you stay in cells, for example, and it requires only incubation for 30 minutes, in 30 minutes you have all your samples stained. If for tissue sections, you can do it uh, also for maybe a couple hours room temperature or do it overnight at 4 degrees C. And here, if you can combine and conjugate primary antibodies to different uh, dyes and have means to analyze these dyes or visualize under the microscope, so you have all necessary lasers on the confocal microscope, we have all the cubes on the conventional microscope, you can easily see them. So you can pretty much have a large number of targets detected. And it can be used easily for both IHC and ICC because there are no harsh treatment conditions for cells. Cells will remain intact. There are cons to this, uh, to this uh, protocol. So it works good for abundant tissue targets because when you, you don't have a large number of fluorescent dyes detecting the antigens of interest. And um, uh, that's why the target should be abundantly expressed to be visualized. A conjugation of fluorophores to prime antibodies may impair their affinity and result in weak staining. Like any conjugation of primary antibodies to any heptan or fluorophore, it may interfere with binding sites on the antibody. And of course, it requires resources to perform conjugation. So you have to either uh, uh, find a company that can do this service for you or buy conjugation kits and do it by yourself and then analyze the yield of conjugated uh, antibodies. So, uh, these are the obstacles that uh, should be kept in mind. Um, I mentioned that the uh, direct detection may not be as sensitive as indirect detection, and there is chemistry behind this. Uh, when how many dyes can be conjugated to second to the, to the primary antibody? Usually, it's about between four and eight molecules. If it's more, uh, then uh, these dyes may quench each other, and instead of having bright fluorescence, uh, fluorescence will become dim. So the signal will be weak and may be undetectable. Um, when we, for example, I, and then when we compare it to indirect detection, we have to keep in mind and remember how many secondary antibodies can bind to primary antibodies. And uh, usually uh, we talk about that between two and four molecules of secondary antibody per one molecule of primary antibody. So let's say if we have four dyes conjugated here, and we have four dyes conjugated to secondary antibodies. In this case, if we have three secondary antibodies bound to primary antibodies, we have three times more fluorophore. Signal will be three times brighter than what we can accomplish doing just direct conjugation. That's what have, has to be kept in mind. To view the full video of this and all of our other webinars for bioscientists at the bench, please visit bitesizebio.com slash webinars.